hatred. God was intending for Jesus to do something that would flip that to something better. And uh, so maybe Jesus recognized that he needed to spend some time deepening his connection to God, to strengthening his resolve, to maybe clearing away the cobwebs of what was going on in his life so that he could remain focused on his mission, which was to serve people. His mission was not to serve the devil, like the devil was trying to get him to do, but Jesus was supposed to be of benefit to the world and the people that live in it. I'm going to go back a little bit and talk about each of the three temptations uh, separately. First of all, uh, it was kind of a simple temptation. Uh, uh, Satan came, came forward with a rock and said, well, if you're hungry, after 40 days you're going to be hungry. Why don't you just simply take and turn this little rock into a loaf of bread and eat up? And Jesus said, people do not live by bread alone. And then he went on to say something about people live by, this, by the will of God. It's interesting when we think about that because later in the gospel stories, Jesus turned things, almost turned some, well, how do I say, I'm saying this wrong. He magnified the loaves and the fishes in such that five or 10,000 people could eat. So he already at that time had the power. He could have turned that loaf of bread, the stone into a loaf of bread, and chose not to. So another one of the temptations is the, the devil led him up on the, the parapet of the temple. This is coming from the Matthew uh, reading now. And said, well, if you're the son of God, just throw yourself off the edge of the temple and fall down those 400 feet and let the angels catch you. There again, Jesus rebuked Satan and said, this is not what life is about. It's not about me, but it's about finding ways to be of service to others. And then the third temptation was that Satan took him up to a high mountain and showed him the whole world. And uh, I smile at this because uh, you can't see the whole world from one mountain, but, but then Satan promised Jesus to be the ruler of the entire universe. Everything. Everything I'm going to give you, Satan says. The reason I smiled is because Satan is lying. He doesn't have control over everything. Sometimes in our, in our wonderings and sometimes when I, when I listen to people talk about the devil, somehow it seems as if they talk as though God is, that Satan has more power than God. Well, that's not so. Satan is a, is a phony, an imposter, a liar. Just, just get out of here, you. You've you got no business in my life or anybody else's life. <laughs> well, it's not so easy. So, so that leads me to the next concern that I have is, how do we talk about resisting the evil forces in our lives or in the world. Just how do we do it? It's tough. Temptation comes. We're, we're pulled here and we're pulled there. How do we save, stay true to ourself? Like Jesus was doing in the wilderness and he prevailed over the temptations. Well, like I was saying before, I'm in, more inclined to think that the temptations, the forces that are trying to pull us into do something that we don't want to do or shouldn't be doing, they're inside of us. It's not a force out there. It just isn't, most of the time at least. It's something in me. And I have to recognize that before I can do something about it. And it's, 
in me, it's the way I think about things. And I, not by myself, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, I can develop control over those things that compel me, unless we're involved in addiction or something like that. But most of my thoughts, I can learn how to deal with them and control them. And I, for me, the, the phrase, watering the seeds, is a helpful phrase. So when I have a thought, if it's a negative thought, and then I pour a cup of water on it, then it grows. So let's think of an example. Suppose somebody has just uh, said something unkind to me, okay? And uh, I fuss and I stew about this, and, and I, I say, well, I'm gonna get back at them. I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna say something bad to them. And then I, that's pouring a cup of water on it. I'm watering the seed. And uh, then I think, well, the next time I see them, I'm going to shout at them. Okay, I poured another cup of water on the seed. And uh, then when I'm sitting down to relax for the evening, all of a sudden what they said about me comes to my mind, and I kind of grit my teeth and shake my fist, and, and, uh, and I poured another cup of water on the seed. And the list goes on and on, and the seed germinates, it grows, it's bigger and bigger, and pretty soon it's a big thing in my life. So suppose instead of pouring the water on the negative seed, suppose I went over here on the other side and I, I thought of some nice things to say, and I said, well, maybe that person was having a bad day, maybe they didn't really mean what they said, okay. That's watering the positive seed, the first cup of water. And then after a while I think, well, you know, that person was my friend. I shouldn't feel this way about them. Okay, so another cup of water on the seed and the positive uh, idea starts to grow and then pretty soon I, I think to myself, well, I need to forgive that person. So another positive watering, okay? And then I think, well, I'm not ready to do it yet, but, but someday I'm going to go and, and, uh, and have a conversation with my friend. And maybe I did something wrong that caused them to shout at me. Okay, here we go. Do you see what's going on here? The positive seeds are growing and growing, and pretty soon it might be possible that that friendship can be uh, uh, restored. Watering the seeds. And... Uh, it's us, it's me, I can control this. It might take a long time sometimes if some, something is pretty hard to work with, but it, the possibility is there. And what if we as a congregation do that sometimes when something happens in a community or to our church? What if we as a, a community can water the positive seeds in life? by supporting one another and helping one another. We're not going to do this by ourselves, but that's what Jesus is all about. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness so he could become stronger. The Holy Spirit can lead us too so that we become stronger. And like Jesus, we need to remember and remind ourselves it's not about me. It's about serving others. Now, when we serve others, you know this. When we do something nice for somebody else, it's, it's not just for that other person. It comes back to us. I mean, it always goes, give and take, give and take, Take and give, take and give. I'll close with a little story. A person, uh, it's a lesson that I learned from someone uh, many, many years ago. There was a young, young man who was starting out in farming. He was a bachelor, had decided he was going to continue to be a bachelor, chose not to marry. 
And uh, so what kind of values? He was a, a, a person of faith. So what kind of values would he choose to live his life by as, as a young man growing into finding a way to make a living for himself and, uh, and living in the world and, and not being totally self-centered? And uh, so he decided to live as a focus on his life, contentment. He was going to live a life where he was going to try to strive to be contented with the things that he had and with his lot in life and with all those things that surround him. So he chose to become a farmer and he said, well now I'm going to be a farmer. What kind of farmer? How will I be able to be a farmer in such a way that, that I don't get caught up in, uh, in all the busyness of farming but can maintain a, a level of contentedness? So he decided to be a dairy farmer. Well, there's a lot of work with being a dairy farmer. We know that. But, but he liked cows and uh, liked milking cows and doing that. So he acquired some land. And he said, well, how much land do I need, you see? I'm single, so I don't need as much as somebody that has a family. So he decided uh, four quarters. That's enough. He lived in a place where the land was pretty good. You understand? Recognize already this is a, an old story, OK? Uh, that would be a really small small farm now, I suppose. But anyway, he, he did the computations, like, well, if I have 25 cows, you know, and that'll generate some income, and I can sell a little uh, grain on my, from my farm, and I can have a few stock cows. And, and he worked this all out in his mind, and that's what he worked toward. And uh, he liked to have chickens, so he had a little flock of chickens. Uh, he planted an apple tree so uh, he could uh, have some apples to make apple pie for the church supper and uh, there's all kinds of things and uh, then, then he put the other things out of his mind you know when a, when a piece of land came up for sale over here he, he didn't have to bid on that uh, uh, when, uh, when the price of milk went down he said well I'll just make buy I don't have to buy more cows I built my barn for 25 I'll stay with this and I'll live within my means. And for the most part, it worked for him. It was a way of putting a value out there that he was going to live by. A, uh, he wanted to be a contented man. And I think for the most part, he was. And uh, I've, I've remembered that story a lot. And uh, it, it's, it's so kind of at the center of of how I think. This is, this is how we, we need to live. I'm not talking about just contentedness, but I'm talking about putting values in our life that are important, that are the focus of our life. They are values that are higher values than, than um, being acquisitive or, uh, or uh, being uh, more powerful or being... Uh, uh, having our picture in the front of the paper or whatever. Well, I've uh, kind of covered the waterfront on a bunch of things today. <laughs> things that are, that are in my heart and in my mind and I, uh, I keep thinking about and think these are things that need to be shared sometime. In the midst of all this, we remember the Holy Spirit is leading us. The Holy Spirit led Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not abandoning us. In the heart of God, we are remembered and welcome. Amen. We'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The closing hymn, number 391.
Holy Spirit is a powerful force in our lives. And we can make it even more powerful by praying, by deepening our faith, by strengthening our connection with our Creator. We do that for ourselves and for all those people we meet throughout the rest of today and the week. We give ourselves to that power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.